Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the live Q&A for March 20th, 2018. Uh, we're streaming on as we do often nowadays through both YouTube and Twitch. However, still, unfortunately, at this point in time, I'm going to be only taking the questions from YouTube. Um, so, if uh, the we're going to eventually get to Twitch things in. In fact, this week, if I have time, I'm going to try a live Tom versus the Internet game. Uh, be on Twitch only. Not not that we're going to Twitch or anything, but because Twitch gives me faster responses than than YouTube does with the 30 second delay. Maybe we'll stream it on both, but I'll only take the comments from Twitch for that. Okay, so anyhow, uh, yeah, someone just mentioned that the lighting looks different. That's because we got new light bulbs right above, so you can definitely tell already. Um, so anyhow, if you have any questions, we just got back to do a live Q&A. Well, I did like several actually. Last week I had different people on, Steve Monacor and uh, Rory O'Connor from Rory Story Cubes and so did some things. Anyhow, <clears throat> Is this a new Dice Tower logo? No, this is just shirts from shirts. Shorts, shirts from shorts or whatever. They make just different symbols. This one happens to have a meeple. All my Dice Tower shirts are currently in the wash uh, because we went to Gamma. So I'm not wearing an official Dice Tower shirt today. Okay, so as always during this time, I'll answer questions and do what I can do best and Does anyone else think Tom sounds like he's in a cave? <coughs> no, it just might be my, my, my throat. Um, so here we go. Tom, whatever happened to your Dice Tower Express channel idea? Well, we thought about doing it, and it still might come into effect at some point, but the amount of effort that we had to put into just running one of them was a lot of work, so probably... Um, I'm gonna just need more time in a day and someone I would need another editor to help edit that stuff together because it was just a lot of work so it might happen I thought the idea I think the idea is still sound to have another channel that does something specifically like that and um, we were thinking about making this channel very specifically for uh, retail stores to help them out but I think maybe it will happen um, but just not right now all right <clears throat> let's see here I know it's a while away, but do you have any games that you look forward to seeing around Origins Gen Con time? No, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm looking right there at like 100 games that aren't even open yet. In the other room, there's 150 plus games that have not been played yet. There are games that I want to play some more. And then there are 350 games that are all my all-time favorites in another room. So between all those, I'm not sitting around going, ooh, I can't wait to Origins and Gen Con. There's a lot of cool stuff out right now. Did you get that hands-on with Fireball Island? Not yet. Um, I noticed that last time you filmed in front of your calyx shelves that they're lined up now. I'm sure they've been like that for a while, but why did you change that? Uh, they weren't lined up originally because of the layout of the room. Also, I liked offsetting them a little bit. The new room in the studio here allowed us to put them on there in different ways. They're also not all in a big long row anymore. It just works out fine, that's all. Um, I'm watching this while making a lovely Indian chicken curry. How do you like your curries? Spicy, I guess. Uh, I, I just like, I like curries with a lot of potatoes and meat in them, I guess. Um, what is my favorite William Shakespeare play? Hmm. Well, it's one of his comedies for sure. Um, I'm afraid I haven't seen one in a very long time. So let's see here. It would be is it all's well that ends well? Maybe the comedy of errors. That's probably. I think that's my favorite, maybe. All right, that's a good question, though. All right. If you knew that you couldn't do something, would you still try? That doesn't really make any sense because that's not a very 
that's a, such a generalized statement, right? Like, I know I can't fly, so I'm not going to try to fly. So what, is that, what, what do you mean? I mean, I think it'd be more specific. I know if I, I can't jump off a gigantic building and live, so I don't do it. I know I, I can't beat Michael Jordan in basketball, even though he's retired and much older than me, so I don't try. I mean, there's various things. I'm, I, I think you need to be more specific. Why review any of the upcoming Magic products? Possibly, but probably not. Um, just we're, we're, we have such a backload right now of things to review. It is, I'm not, I'm not getting upset. I know this sounds like I say this all the time, right? Like so many games to review, um, but uh, no, it's actually good. I mean, we just, I have to come to grips here with the idea that we can't review everything. As much as I try, with me, Sam, and Z all working full time on this, we can't review everything. So once we come to that, the grips with that idea, then we, I'm just going to review what I can review. A lot of cool games, some things I'm excited about trying out, but um, I forgot why we were doing it. Oh, so Magic Gathering is probably not gonna fit in there. <laughs> I forgot what I was talking about. <coughs> is MeepleCon the first time I met the Murph Brothers in person? Well, not this MeepleCon, but last MeepleCon I met them, so or have all the bigger companies driven the small guy out of Kickstarter with all their large dollar projects? They haven't. It's, it's still possible for someone new to start in Kickstarter. It happens every week almost. Could I send you a dice tower I made? I heard both Quadropolis and Machikoro both tend to stale over time. Has this been true for you? And if so, what do you think the reason might be? Any game can, can get stale over time for anybody, really, if you play it too much or anything. For example, Machi Koro is not as interesting to me as it once was. That's fine. Quadropolis still is. That's fine. It might be different for other people. Um, I love the history of the Dice Tower series. Any thoughts of doing a video about the future of the Dice Tower? The future is now. And how we can help achieve that. Um... I think, second. Um, I think, no, uh, because my ideas of the future change all the time. Everywhere I go, I'm watching, I'm thinking. I just thought of something new to do, a little series, a, a minor series that I'm going to be running probably in a week or two, and it just came to my mind. And I always have like a, ooh, this would be cool to do. This would be neat to do, and I have taken some more steps towards what I would like the Dice Tower to be. I said at the beginning of this year that I really have big plans for the Dice Tower, and I've taken a couple steps over the past week at Gamma slash MeepleCon at, towards that end. What are those steps? Well, once they're solidified, we'll announce them. Um, but, you know, I'm just looking forward to seeing things like that. So I'm not really looking to do things about the future. I'd rather talk, I like talking about the past because it's, it's interesting to hear, but just talking about it. I kind of do that a lot anyway. Do you put your shoes on sock, sock, shoe, shoe, or sock, shoe, sock, shoe? I put on my uh, shoes sock, sock. And then when I finally leave the house, then I put my shoes on. I, I don't wear shoes at home. Uh, I wear shoes here at the studio. I used to wear just socks, but ever since I saw the scorpion, now I wear shoes. But I haven't seen a scorpion, no, no living scorpion in this house now for mm, half, half a year. We saw some dead ones in the past couple weeks that on the sidewalk outside, but that's because I'm spraying the outside of the house with a scorpion killer consistently. How close is the studio to being finished or is it completed now? I'm not sure it will ever be completed. Like for example, you can see a little bit of graffiti here. I want to put some graffiti on this wall here. Um, so uh, I'm going to do that. I got some more dice guys that um, we have now. If you've seen a Mark Street, Jason Living and Melody Vassal dice guys. That's exciting, and we'll get some of that stuff on signs and things. Uh, always going to be room for improvement. We're going to get some trusses built into this roof here, so we can have overhead cameras and things like that, too. Why don't you like characters like Gwenpool? Do you not like characters like Deadpool, or was it specifically Gwenpool herself? Eh, Deadpool and Gwenpool are, are the same for me in that regard. I find them interesting. They, they can, there can be good stories about them, but it's too much all the time. The fourth wall breaking, the silliness, the, 
that that stuff's funny to a point, but after a while, it just it, and it also they're constantly trying to put Deadpool in the overall Marvel cinematic, I mean not cinematic, but the mar regular Marvel universe, and it just doesn't work the same way. It, it's on, and then Deadpool's there, and I like Deadpool, but it almost feels like he should be in a separate universe. If that makes sense, Gwenpool is the same way. That's all. <clears throat> What's my plan for Easter? Well, every Easter I go worship at my church uh, for the morning, and then I make scrumptious shrimp for lunch. So I will probably do the same thing. Would you ever consider doing a couple of videos on how to use Board Game Geek? Oh, yeah. I plan to do that at some point. Tom, Privateer Press announced Monster Apocalypse 2.0. Are you excited for this at all? It was on Eric's top 10 monster games, but will he still like it now that the minis will need assembly and paint? My interest in Monster Apocalypse 2nd Edition is zero because of that reason. When I first announced it, I was like, oh, it sounds really great. They're going to take the rule, you know, they're going to take this game. You know, there was some funkiness with the rules and everything. Clean, clear that up. Make it backwards compatible. Not backwards compatible. You have to put the miniatures together. They're not snap fit. They're glue fit. It's going to be more expensive because of that. It's you have to paint the stuff, and my there's a couple reasons my interest is zero. One, because I don't want to do all that, and two, because I don't think the game is going to survive that. I really don't think the game is going to is not as a game. It was cool to buy packs and be like, "Ooh, I got Godzilla. Ooh, I got King Kong, or whatever they're you know, whatever the the cohorts were. That was really cool. It is not really cool to buy the model. I mean, it's nice you get to pick which mints you get now and put it all together. Miniature gamers are going to like that, but board gamers are not going to be as excited. Um, <clears throat> Origins is not far away. Best Jenny's ice cream? Probably their raspberry... Uh, it wasn't rum raspberry, it was raspberry sorbet mixed with something, but it was really delicious. What's the worst problem you encountered on a convention trip you had so far? Um, well, there is different kinds of uh, convention problems that can happen. Thank you very, very much. Ah. Um, so there's at convention problems and uh, getting to convention problems. The getting to one easily was Gen Con 2015 when we left, or 2016, when we left Gen Con and then that day Delta had their major problems so we didn't get home till like 24 hours later. We were at the airport for a long time then when we did get back our luggage was light. It was just kind of a bleh situation. Um, and then uh, the second worst traveling was probably what we just did to Vegas, where we, we flew to we flew to Reno through Vegas, and we got to Vegas. We found out that our second flight was delayed, so we got in. We were already getting like two in the morning, so blah. Um, and then when we flew from Reno back to Vegas, uh, that was like a six-hour delay, and it just we were in the morning. Two separate points in the same trip was just exhausting. I'm still really tired. You probably can see it to some degree. Because, and we, when we flew back here, at least that flight went well, though. So I'm going to try to work on these flights as we do them next time. But, I mean, it is what it is. I can't get that upset over this stuff. It's a little annoying when it happens, but that's the worst for traveling to conventions. Um, and I'm sure other people have way worse stories than we do, so I can't complain. Uh, for uh, worst problems at conventions, uh, we have problems at some conventions getting the things we need and getting set up. It can be a real pain in the neck. Um, but some conventions are so fantastically organized and they, they make up for it. So, Have you ever played a game that you enjoy but can't to the table because the artwork is too generic? I'm having the same issues with Mystic Veil. Vale. Yeah, that's happened to me before. Let's see here. Remember, I'm not going to answer every question. I'm just going through.
Love that you included the underrated Oracle of Delphi in your best of Feld video. Did you take that when I uh, did both Feld and and Martin Wallace? That I take a lot of heat for not putting some games in the list. People are like, well, how can you not? It's a travesty. You're an idiot for not putting it in our list. Like just different tastes, I guess. Right? That's how that works. But woe betide you if you do so. Um, I do like Oracle of Delphi a lot, really. Have you been watching any NCAA basketball? Not by choice. It was on some of the airport terminals and whatever, but I don't, I don't watch, I don't watch sports. I mean, I'll watch baseball occasionally. I, I don't have TV anymore, so I don't watch stuff, and I don't go back and watch games that have already been played. Live, I'll watch pretty much any sport. It's interesting to watch stuff live. I like the Olympics especially. I find that sort of thing interesting. And then I would play, put baseball and soccer on the list of things I would like to watch. Football, maybe a little bit. But my, but my interest in football is minor at best. My interest in basketball is zero. My interest in hockey is like negative. My interest in boxing is even lower than that. Race cars, it's okay. But I mean, lots of people like it, so that's fine. I'm not like anti-sports, it's just not that interesting for me to watch. When you walk to four conventions, are biblical themed games more likely to catch your eye or turn you off because there are so many bad ones? Well, they catch my eye and then I find out they're bad. I'll be glad to be proven wrong. I'm always hoping that the next one is the one. If Vassal was an alien race in Cosmic Encounter, what would their power be? Well, if Vassal, V-A-S-S-E-L, was an alien race, they'd probably serve the other races. I think they already have that, the butler. Uh, what's the biggest challenge to coming up with new top 10 lists for the Dice Tower for all three of you? Just getting it done. They're more work than people think. Roy says, I think when you do a new game playthrough, you should play it off camera once to get a feel for the game. It would be much easier to follow you and understand the game if you know the game a little. Who's to say we didn't? Um, your number one anticipated game of Essen was the Justice League game. What happened that it's still unplayed? Yeah, good point. Um, the rules. That's really a big, tough one there. That's why it's still unplayed, unfortunately. Due to the massive amount of games you have to review in a few years, you'll have to add the Dice Tower Bonfire alongside the Cruise and the Con, where you get rid of games you won't get to. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, can I bring you a giant piece of Italian cheese at the next UK Games Expo? Oh, yes. I love cheese. Tom, did you find Majesty for the Realm to be kind of like Dominion? No, it's more like Splendor, I think. With Toys R Us going, do you think there is hope for a new toy store to take its place and also sell more strategy games? No, I don't think so. I think it's just a way of the future. I did see an article somewhere that said something like, with Toys R Us going, KB's thinking about making a comeback? Maybe, but the KB's I've been to don't have fantastic games in their stores anyway. Have you ever watched Korean dramas? I have. Who is the better beard, you, Sam, or Z? Well, I'm not sure, but it's not me. This takes me forever to grow. So you don't like Squirrel Girl? No, I do like Squirrel Girl, actually. I think Squirrel Girl is a little less um, in your face than Deadpool is. I don't know. I find Squirrel Girl funny. She's not as annoying as Deadpool, I think. I'm seeing a lot of people having problems with skipping and stuff. Of course, this is like eight minutes ago. I don't know, I find... Hmm. 
Well, anyway, someone said, what's that white thing on the shelf? This? <laughs> I saw it at a store. And it was on a discount shelf. So I got it. I think stuff like that's funny. Um, DC or Marvel? Marvel? Tom, why the change of heart for Gam? I thought you guys weren't attending Welcome. Well, with it, we worked out all the things, and we went. So it worked out. Hooray! And um, we had a good time. Do you think Jesus was really born in December or maybe September? Probably September. The Bible says there were shepherds in the field. So. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> As bosses go, are you more like Ebenezer Scrooge or Michael Scott? Hopefully I'm like neither one of those bosses. Um, do, 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 do. do you ever get tired of space themes? Seem more, that seems more overdone than zombies. I think there are more space games than there are zombie games, but here's the deal, folks. I think this is a false equivalency argument. When we, we don't say there are more space games than horror games, we say there are more space games than zombie games. Space is huge, it's a gigantic genre. There's all kinds of things you can do in space. Zombies is a very specific subgenre of horror. I've always been kind of fascinated that there's, there's like zombies and Cthulhu are the two most horror done board games. And there's so much other things that are in horror besides, I mean, when you go see horror movies, there is not zombies and Cthulhu do not dominate them. In fact, there's very few Cthulhu movies and there's, there's a decent amount of zombie movies, right? But there's still don't, it's not, that's not all there is. There's lots of kinds of horror movies. There's very few kinds of horror games. It's zombies, Cthulhu, and everything else. It's a pittance of those two. Now for space, space is like, could be a gazillion things. There's all kinds of things in that subgenre. If you were saying epic fighting space games, then yes, that, that's a specific of the genre. Or space racing or space pickup and delivery. There's really lots of different ones. But I don't think it's overused. I think it's being used more often now. I still don't think it's being used, I mean, more than anything else. I mean, I'm looking over here right now at the games that are on this shelf. So let's go through their themes here. So we got lions. That's cool. Um, zombies. Yeah, go figure. Uh, fantasy, pirates. I'm skipping some of the ones that are like non themed. I'm picking ones that have themes. Um, mining, fantasy, ninjas, fantasy, Star Trek, which is a subset of space. Um, uh, adventure, modern life, fantasy, western, civilization, um, fantasy, 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 fighting, pirates, vikings, Arthurian, trains, detectives, transportation, Space. I think there's way more fantasy games than there are space games, honestly. But that was a very un, un uh, specific poll. Let's look at the ones I'm going to be reviewing next week. All right, so uh, fantasy, 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 space. <laughs> there's there's only one space game I'm looking at next week. But there is a space game. I don't know. I'm no zombie games. I'm getting way off tub uh, off subject. All right. Can we get a video on commonly asked questions in regard to Chief Sokotoa? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people asking things about Chief Sokotoa. And, and you're right, I should probably do an FAQ on him at some point. But I don't, I don't think we've really answered the things about him too often. So, yeah, I don't mind. Do you still play games with Nick from Board Game Brawl? Well, actually, Nick lives about two hours away. So he used to come to our meetups that we had a one hour away in Hollywood. He would drive south, we'd drive north. But he hasn't come to those for a year and a half or so. Um, he's kind of, a, as, far as, I can, as far as I know, he just plays with a closed group at his home for the most part. 
Um, the lady standing in for Eric once in the podcast was great. I can't remember her name, but if possible, Dice Tower should have her on again. You're talking about Crystal, and Crystal was a fantastic. In fact, she's one of the people who helped put uh, MeepleCon together, and so we just spent some time with her, and that was a great time. Crystal Pisano. That's, that's, that's her last name, yes. The release of Mega Civilization The West was recently delayed by an unforeseen circumstance. Have you heard anything about this? No, I do not keep up on my Mega Civilization news. Do you think Gibson Civilization release is related? Possibly. But shame on Gibson for that release. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to play it or not. I know a lot of people out there say, but you should play it. And other people are like, it's an eight-hour game. You know, I don't know if I want to play it or not. But here's the deal. Their production doesn't make me want to play it. It is the exact same production as when it first came out. What is that, like 80 or 81? That's ridiculous. It's the year 2018. I'm not saying they have to change the rules. I don't know anything about the game. I don't know if it needs to be streamlined and modernized or whatever. I will say this. Every person that I've talked to about it has said Advanced Civ is better than Civ. Everybody. I've not met anyone who said the original Civ was better. So why would they not do that? And then, of course, Mega Civilization exists, so people like that. So they have this game that's only for a subset of people anyway, and you make it look like nonsense? That's foolishness, poppycock, it's silliness. No, 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 no. Why would you not make it look better? You can keep the exact same rules if you want to, but just modernize it, make the whole thing look fantastic. Boo! It makes me not want to play it. That plus the eight hour time frame. Will you review the City of Kings? I will. Eventually. What's the biggest challenge for upkeeping your headquarters? Probably our internet speed. We wish we had faster internet speeds here. And if you are noticing any uptick today in the live thing, it's because we kind of got caught in a crunch and one of the Dice Tower videos was still uploading at the beginning of this. And I would imagine if you saw any stuttering, that's what it was. As time goes by, we'll get faster internet speed here, I'm sure. Whatever happened to that book of top 10 that you got as a present? I should bring that here to the studio. It's at my house. Have you talked to Scott Nicholson recently? No, I, 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 spent, I spent a little bit of time talking to him when he was on the cruise. So that's recently, I guess. The cruise was only in December. That's not too far away. Um, have you ever done a backflip? I have not. I feel like I'm going to die not having done a backflip. What would you like for a future Marvel Legendary expansion to be? For me, I would like a Marvel... Cinematic Universe expansion. Well, they already did one. They did the uh, Spider-Man Homecoming one, and it was it just doesn't work. And, as far as I can tell, did not do that well, and they immediately stopped doing them. Marvel Cinematic Universe might be best as a, as a separate game that was not working with the other ones. It's just a, a weird combination to see the comics mixed with the Cinematic Universe. I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I think... I watched a trailer for the new Avengers Infinity War four times last night. First watch it with one of my daughters, then another daughter came in, so we showed it to her, and then my wife and my other daughter came in, so we showed it to them, and then we went and paused it in a few spots so we could discuss some of the things that were in the trailer. As a family, this is like the, this is like the, the closest movie to a family that everyone's excited about seeing, at least all the older kids. Hey, Tom, in your history of the Ice Star videos, you said you collected baseball cards as a kid. What did you end up doing with them? I gave them to my brother, so... I don't know if they were ever that valuable. We didn't treat them with like kid gloves. We used them. I read all the stats on them. I tried to make a game around the stats on the cards. So they weren't like fantastic. Um, Did you see the new Street Fighter Miniatures games? The famous YouTuber Angry Joe is putting up on Kickstarter. 
I read something about this earlier today, so let's take a quick look at this, all right? Street Fighter Kickstarter. Now, I'm sure, I'm, I'm, I'm not even looking at it. I'm, I'm, before I get to it, I'm just gonna guess, let's see. It's miniatures games, it's Jasco. They don't have a good record for making games at all. Angry Joe, though, is very high following, so I'm gonna say it's at 200,000 already. Well, maybe I should actually... Where is the... Uh... Oh, is it not out yet? <laughs> okay, so I went to the Kickstarter. I guess it's not there yet. It's coming to Kickstarter April 4th. I'm sure it will do well. Um, but again, Jasco for me is one of those companies that's almost an automatic pass at this point. Their games have just not been very good. Um, I don't know, any, maybe Angry Joe's a fantastic uh, game designer. Who knows? I have no, you know, no knowledge on that subject or not. So, he does like board games a lot, plays them, has commented on our show before, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But I'll tell you this, if this game is not good, then I think I'm done with Jasco Games. This is their last chance for me, because they just have not proven themselves in the past. Um... The video skipped when you answered my question, can I send you a dice tower I made? Did you say yes or no? I said yes. <laughs> I just started Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Have you read any of her novels? No. So I uh, finished The Reckoners. It was a great series. I really enjoyed it. And because I enjoyed it so much, I've downloaded the Mistborn trilogy, and I'm, I'm just scratching the surface of that one, starting to read that one. So I'm looking forward to reading more about them. Have you ever visited Coral Castle in Leisure City? No, I have not. And it's so close to my house. I mean, it's like from my studio here, I could be at Coral Castle in five minutes. From, that's including me going out and getting in a car. And yet I haven't gone. I've lived here now for seven years. I have zero interest. There's a couple reasons. One, it's super expensive. It's like 20 plus dollars a person. I can see half of it over the wall. And it's a coral castle. I know that it's like mysterious backstory of the guy. How did he build it? I don't know. But that's not interesting enough for me to pay 25 bucks. It ain't gonna be 25 bucks because I'm never gonna go do anything like that by myself. So I'd have to take someone with me, which makes it 50 bucks. So, eh. Um, I am loving the Dice Tower history videos, possibly more than anything I've watched over the past years outside of a few top 10, 100 lists. Thank you for doing it. I really was surprised at how many people liked the Dice Tower history. I thought it would be an interesting thing to do, but I thought that it might be more interesting for me, right? I found them fascinating to put together, to get them together, and I'm, I'm pleased. I don't have any more coming this week because initially I thought it would be a four-part series. Uh, as it turns out, it could be six to eight parts. Again, I haven't started putting it together. I'm still in Korea in the, in the show. Eric is not even the co-host of the show yet. Uh, so that's been a while. It's still 10 years of history to go through. How long will that take? Well, it depends on how long it takes me to talk about each part. I guess as I get closer and closer to the present, I'll know more about it. So I'm gonna put those together soon. Um, and uh, maybe next week, but if not next week, for sure the week after that. So I am having a good time doing those. It's a nice trip down memory lane. And I was very, very pleasantly surprised at how much people enjoyed those. So thank you very much. <coughs> Why are you cool? Uh, air conditioning is on. But it's not too bad, because after being in uh, Reno and Las Vegas, well, coming back to Florida, I was like, ah. But it wasn't that what made me happy. It was the humidity. I always hear people complain about the humidity, but when I'm in a place with a lack of humidity, my nose is all crusty, my skin feels all shriveled, my lips are drying out. We came back to Florida, and it was like, ah, blessed water in the air. Do you think we'll see a time in the next five years where there aren't quite so many games releasing each year? It's so difficult to keep up, but they do expansions too. Well, we are talking about this exact subject in the Dice Tower. If you listen, the Dice Tower episode went up today from Manny Suzanne. Great stuff. Last week, Eric and I talked about it. 
next week me and eric will talk about it again um and uh we got a lot of good responses to that so we'll be reading many responses that people sent to us Please don't do a Chief Sokotoa FAQ. Oh, that's fine. I, I mean, I don't have to. Um, one person asked, though. I mean, he probably wouldn't want that information left on the internet anyway. Come to think of it. Not to mention, we have occasionally gone back and changed history or himself. So it would be weird. It would be like a living FAQ because sometimes things would change in it. Hmm. Well, you never know. Is Mario Board Game and Spencer Lars still part of the Dice Tower Network? Haven't seen them since their top 100. Yeah, they're still around. They're just extremely busy. Lars, uh, they just moved to Texas, I believe. Um, or they were, they just moved, I think. And so Lars' job has gotten very, very busy. So I'm sure we will see her in the future at some point. Or she'll be a super famous actress and then she will have no time for the Dice Tower. Where's Manny and the dude? Both banished to the closet currently. <coughs> the people on Board Game Breakfast are all from the US or all over the globe? Oh no, they're not all from the US. Well, Matt and Dan are both from England. Uh, let's see. Who else is on the show? I'm going through all different people on the show. I think maybe most of the rest are Americans. I'm not sure. I'm probably forgetting somebody. But that, that, that I mean, I don't care where someone is from to be on the show. I, I like having a diverse, I mean, when it comes to the Dice Tower Network in general, we got people from all over, and I'm really excited about that. Any thoughts on Feudum? Well, I'm hoping to review that, not this week, but maybe next. I've been waiting for a review of Empires of the Void 2 and Thunderstone Quest. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, I don't normally respond to these, but I did want to mention Thunderstone Quest. We will be doing a live play of that at some point with some giveaways of the game, so I hope that you look forward to seeing that happen. Did Counterfeit Games become a major talking point during Gamma? I think it was a major talking point, but I didn't hear a whole lot of people. I, I, I didn't go to the thing that where they talked about it, so I don't know. Uh, a few people did mention it in conversations, but I didn't hear too much. What speech or poem would you recommend to a high schooler entering a speech talent competition? I don't know. Oh, Captain, my captain? I'd pick a funny one. Like a... I, I, I don't know. I, that's 20 years of my past. I would say, what's something different? And what's something you can get really into? I don't know. That's what I would do. Um, does reviewing games ever feel more like work than an enjoyable hobby? What if it's both? I enjoy reviewing games a lot. How does it affect your ability to play without having a reviewer's mindset when playing? I can't. I'm always reviewing games in my head when I'm playing them, period. Maybe not a party game. I think I can lose myself in a party game and just have a good time. But I'm always thinking critically about stuff. But that doesn't mean I'm not having fun. It's still tremendously fun for me to do stuff like that. How many cheeseburgers can you eat in an hour while doing the okie kokie? I don't think I can do uh, any more than one cheeseburger for sure. I don't eat cheeseburgers much more. I still wish Adam Warlock was involved. Well, is Adam Warlock in the trailer? We couldn't tell. That there's a person with a red cape flowing behind him, and we were discussing, is that Thor? Is it Doctor Strange? Or is it Adam Warlock? And then I said, I don't know if they build Adam Warlock up enough to have him in this movie, and we discussed that, and my kids are like, who's Adam Warlock? And I'm like, you know what? A very forgettable character, in my opinion, um, in the comics. We'll have to wait and see.
Can you highlight a couple of games that caught your interest at Gamma without spoiling too much content in future videos? Uh, well, off the top of my head, I, I was so busy at Gamma just talking to people and things that I didn't really look at the games that hard. So unfortunately, um, there's a lot of videos. I did one video with uh, Steve Bonacore of Stronghold Games, and the rest of the videos were done by Sam Z, Chaz, and uh, Suzanne. So you'll be seeing all those videos over the next uh, week or so. Um, Derek is working on them right now. We'll be uploading all those. What game should I send my son to college this summer? I don't know. Me and Melody have been talking about that. Like, what games she's going to take with her to college. Um, because if she wants to take some of my favorite games, I'm going to have to get her a brand new copy. Or just realize I'm probably not going to play that game while she's at college anyway, so she might as well take that copy. But what if she loses it? And then what am I going to do? So, obviously, she'll take a couple party games. That makes sense. Maybe a two-player game or two. You don't want to take too many games to college. You don't have a lot of space for them. Or just take a few for the first six months and then see where we're at. But it isn't, it's certainly something that, uh, is a, it, for me, it's a fun discussion point. And I'll probably make a video about the game she chose to take with her college and why once it happens. Um, Miss Bourne is great, says some people. Yeah, well, that's what I've heard, and I just never got around to reading it. But there's so many books to read. So, uh, see, with books, when it comes down to it, I'm on the not reviewing side. So I can just read whatever I want. So I'm like, nah, I guess I'll read this book. And I'm finding that I'm really picky with books. Like, there's a lot of books that I'm reading on Amazon Unlimited because you can, like, it's, you subscribe and you can just, there's a lot of free books. So I'm like, nah, the picture on that cover looks cool. Nah. And I'll read a couple chapters and I'm done. Uh, you got to write well for me to want to read you. There's so many things that are poorly written. And I'm not saying this as someone who can write well. I'm just saying that I want to read excellent writing. Now, Brandon Sanderson does a very good job. I like him. Um, there's just some, some authors as I read them, I'm like, wow, I really like what these guys do. And then I'll go and I'll tend to read more of those. So, for example, uh, Timothy Zahn. Love his stuff. You know, and I loved him. I read him in Star Wars, and I thought his Star Wars books were great. And then I was like, oh, he does books outside Star Wars? I guess I'll read them. And I like them all. They're just so good. They're interesting. They, they have me involved. So, that's cool. Is there much of a drive in your industry to be the first to get a review out or to scoop others with news or other exclusives? You know, there was a time. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still fun to have an exclusive. But I'm no longer, like, rushing to get exclusives. It's not that big of a deal for me anymore. Um, because people are going to watch it. You don't necessarily have to be first. And if you rush really hard to get these things out quickly, you probably won't do as good of a job. Me. So... Yeah, it's fun to get a scoop. It's fun to be the first one to get a game. And I still think there are some scoops I've got in my life. Like having the first review of Tickets to Ride was a huge boost for the, my career. Um, but nowadays, I don't care. If we get the game after everyone else, it is what it is. I still like to get them early. And it's sometimes you sit there and go, every other reviewer got that game, but I didn't. That happens a couple times. And then I look over at my shelf and go, what am I complaining about? <laughs> you know, it is what it is. So... We try to get news out as quickly as we can because it's, well, news. But I think it's just not going to happen. I'm never going to please everyone. There's someone watching this video right now who is annoyed with me because I have not reviewed a specific game they want me to review. But we just can't get to all of them. So. Um, someone's saying the sound is low. Well, I can fix that. Do, 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 do. Be prepared for sound to go up. Sound up. Sound up. There we go. How's that? Do, 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 do. I'm singing in the rain. All right. Let's see. Are you going to do a live playthrough or a review of Thunderstone Quest? Or both. Best place to eat in Key Largo? The Fish House. It's just called The Fish House. And you should eat there because it's amazing. But here's the thing, special thing about The Fish House. 
the appetizers are unbelievable. The food is good, but the appetizers are <sighs> so good. Key lime there is also really good. It's in the top five key limes I've had in the area. So you might as well eat there rather than go find it somewhere else. There are other good key limes around, but it's very good. It's a great meal, fantastic. Um, do you think any of the other contributors might do it? How I got into gaming or how I joined Dice Tower? Possibly. I'm going to finish the Dice Tower history first, and then we might have other people do it too. Have you read any of the books in the Dusty series from Brett Morell? I have not, but my daughter Melody has. Um, sort of sounds like the lavalier one isn't picking it up. Well, that's easy enough to test. You hear me tapping on it? If so, then it's the... Oh, it's pointing downward. Oof. This is not good. That's probably why. Man, if Derek was here, he'd yell at me for not having the mic on properly. That probably changed how it sound. And hey, only 10 minutes to go. Sorry, one of the problems that we had here, folks, I can't really blame the upside down mic on this one, but we took all our equipment with us to Origins and we just set it up today. So, I mean, uh, to Gamma. So we have to recalibrate everything, set everything up the way it was. So, yeah, it's getting back into the swing of things, but hopefully that fixed the mic in that way. Well, let's see here. Are there any family names from either you or your wife's side that you really like or really avoid? I don't know what, what you mean by that. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go with the mic. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, I feel like such a dork now. Sorry. Um... Am I going to review the food truck game? Probably. It's on my pile somewhere. The worst food I ever had in my life was in Key Largo. Well, so? That doesn't mean Key Largo is bad food. See, this happens to people all the time. They'll go somewhere, they'll have a bad experience, and then they blame it on the entire place. They'll be like, well, definitely, this was awful, blah, 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 blah. So, maybe you just had a bad experience, and that happens a lot of times. I've done that too, right? I'd be like, man, I went to this place, everyone said it was fantastic, it wasn't that great, or whatever. Maybe it just was an off day, or anything could have happened. It's hard for us to get over that, though. What's the big deal about key lime pie in Florida? I was just in the Keys for vacation, and I was surprised at how much I saw best key lime pie signs. Is it a Southern or Florida thing? It's a human thing. First of all, if you go all over the country, you'll see that there's key lime pies on the menus, which are pathetic compared to actual key lime pie, so I say as a key lime pie snob. Secondly, it is one of the greatest foods known to mankind. I do not know how you can say such a thing. If you have some shrimp and some key lime pie, you have a good life. Period. End of discussion. Uh, let's see here. Did you play The Mine last week? It's been blowing up Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I saw it was blowing up Twitter. No, I did not. Can you give Eric a slap on the wrist for the Reckoner spoiler in the podcast? I was halfway through the first book when he dropped it. Oh, I don't even know what he said. Eric talked about it? He talked about the Reckoners on the podcast? Maybe he did. I don't remember this now. Tom, how could you forget Dave? What are we talking about now? Oh, Dave Luza. Oh, <laughs> from, yes, I told you I'd forget somebody. I, I just with the country that they're from. Dave is from the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, well, but like I said, we got lots of people that are from all over the world, not just Americans. Um, this is what happens when you're 10 minutes behind on the comments. Tom, did you catch any con crud? I hear you coughing. What? No! I think I'm just really tired. I do sound like I'm uh, getting lower here. Hopefully that's just a thing, right? I'll, I'll try to get some good sleep tonight and see if I can catch up on that. All right, let's see what else. 
Blah, 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 blah. Do you find it frustrating to have theme and story mixed with rules or separate? I don't mind if it's in the rules a little bit. You know, sometimes there's rules where they intersperse little things. Sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're, they think they're funny. It's kind of a, a hard line to cross. I think a little bit of thematicness will help me learn the rules. I'm trying to think of a time where I thought that was a bad thing. Um, what makes a game deserve a Miami Dice review? Nothing deserves a Miami Dice review. It's just me and Sam both played it, so we're going to both review it. Um, best Clank expansion, Sunken Treasure or Mummy? I'd say they're equally good. Tom, I live in Naples, just a little over an hour from you. I love it here, but I can't see to find a game group in area. Any recommendations? Should I just drive to the East Coast? Yeah, you should. But I don't, honestly, I don't know. I would, I would search. I'm, there's, got, there's gamers in Naples. I know there is. I just don't know who they are off the top of my head. But I definitely have talked to people who live in Naples and game. What are you drinking in that mega cup? It is just water. Cool, clear water. The sweetest taste I know. Cool, clear water will cause a tree to grow. I'm thirsting for the water. All right, anyway. Tom, do you read Christian fiction at all? Yeah, I've read some, but not a whole lot recently. I would like to read some more. The problem is it's hard finding good stuff. If someone has good authors to recommend me, send them to me. I'd love to read some more. Um, how close is the cruise to selling out? It is pretty close. I don't have the exact numbers, but I'm going to see Jason tonight, and he's going to give me the exact numbers. Jason will sit down, and he'll be like, cruise and I'll be like Jason the cruise is like just a year away I need to think about other conventions first and he'll be like cruise and then he'll tell me more information about the cruise and I will know but oh uh, let's see here what's my favorite seafood you know I want to say lobster but I think shrimp might be catching up to it but but jumbo shrimp uh, for it's interesting enough shrimp is is uh, the bigger the shrimp is, the better it tastes, I find. Especially some of those, oh, some of the shrimp down here are so good. Um, we, we went out to eat yesterday and I had uh, some seafood. It was uh, my daughter Ruby, her ninth birthday. She picks seafood, I like her a lot. Um, and so I was able to try scallops, shrimp, and lobster close to each, to each other. And I, and I like all three of those. Crab is also very good, but my problem with crab is the amount of work that goes in the crab to get out of the shells is problematic. Um, but I do like that idea. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with with shrimp maybe. Although again, lobster is pretty close. But I don't think there's any seafood that I do not like. I like it all. Clams, mussels, calamari, squid, octopus. Fish, 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 fish. Mm-mm-mm. Alrighty. Have you ever had sour orange pie? I have not, but it sounds amazing. All right, now there's lots of people saying they don't like key lime pie. That's fine. Peach pie is good. Yes, for sure. My friend and I played our first scenario in Gloomhaven and got whomped. Any advice for us? Lower the level of the scenario. Hands down, it's the easiest thing to do. Make it easier for you to beat. It's not a big deal. No shame in that. Once you beat it, then you can level up a little bit and things will get easier. If you think the game's getting too easier, raise the level. But definitely, if you're having a hard time, lower it. You're supposed to have fun playing games. Um... What do you think about reworking the rules for a failed game like Simon's Besieged? It seems they can fix everything with a new rule book, and they're sitting on thousands of copies of miniatures. That's true, 
but you know when the time passes it's hard it's hard to come back and say this game was broken now we're going to fix it it just it works sometimes but not not often do you eat sushi i do i really like sushi although we 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 made a, a mistake last week so we all went out for sushi um, we were taken out to eat by somebody. I want to clarify that because I don't, I don't want to be wasteful. And this place had all-you-can-eat sushi, and it was like good sushi. Not like one of those Chinese all-you-can-eat sushis where it's sitting there. It's this place that makes it for you. And we were like, wow, this is phenomenal. We're not paying. Let's do it. So we, um, we ordered some sushi, and uh, the lady was like, you know, just mark on the thing and you know when you mark it they'll bring out some sushi and and she thought she was clear and we thought she was clear but apparently when we marked it they brought out a long roll of sushi we're talking like 10 piece rolls and we marked 40 of these because we were just under the assumption that uh, we were going to get a few pieces of each we thought we'll have a variety on the table to the point where like i would mark one of the rolls of sushi and someone else will mark it in the same roll. We would not have done it otherwise. So then she came out and we were like, oh. And one of the guys at the table, I will not, I'm not naming names here, but they were like, we can do this. I was like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure we can. I'm not sure we can. But we, we, we almost did it. I think we had less than a roll's worth of sushi left over. And when we left the restaurant, I said, I don't think I'm ever going to eat sushi again. However, if you brought it to me right now, I would eat it. So that was a lie. Shrimp are filthy unless you're buying wild caught. I don't know. Shrimp are delicious. I hate seafood. I would be a bad vassal kid. No, we don't care if you don't like seafood in our family. You can eat chicken. We'll eat the seafood. More for us. Did you end up eating anything good while you were in Las Vegas? Uh, when we were in Las Vegas, not especially. I had some decent food there, but nothing that really... Oh, wait. No, that's a lie. I ate at the... There was a nice restaurant... And I had some, uh, there was a good chicken platter I had. But for the most part, we ate very, very light because we had eaten heavier in Reno. Remember the sushi story? Um, so we uh, were calming down by the time we got to Vegas. Vegas has some solid Korean barbecue. We heard that and it was, so I was like, ah, it's too far away for us to go. I don't want to leave the convention that long. And then by the restaurant we went to had a long wait anyway. So it's kind of a, ha. Huh. Do you like your oysters hot or cold? I like them hot. I'm catching up. Play sushi go party. Yeah. <laughs> I collected Marvel overpower cards long ago. Didn't realize it was a game until I watched your Dice Tower history. Really? You didn't like think the numbers on it like meant anything? It like it like says it's a game. <laughs> um, I didn't even think the artwork for Marvel overpower was really that good. Update on uh, cruise, people, I've already answered that. I, I know this. I know that we've already sold almost as much as we've sold last year, per total. Now we have a little bit of extra room in this one. I do know it will sell out, so don't delay if you're thinking about getting it. Um, hurry up and release more Dice Tower history. Well, I'll get to that. But I am a little tired. It has been a long trip, so I'm just gonna rest for a little bit soon. Uh, but there's more videos coming this week. Starting tomorrow, you will see our Origins preview, I mean, our <laughs> Origins, our Gamma preview videos. They'll be posted. And other things, we got a top 10 list coming your way this week. We have, uh, I got some of my best of designers, some videos from Sam and Z. I think Sam's doing a live Q&A tomorrow, so you can bug him and things like that. Like I said, if I have time this week, I will do a Dice Tower, me versus the internet in some sort of game. I have some ideas. We'll see what happens. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching live Q&A on the Dice Tower.